Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing another Clean With Me marathon. These have consistently been some of your favorites. And now that the busyness of fall is here, I figured it would be the perfect time to share another one. You guys always tell me you love putting my videos up on your TV or your tablet or phone and just cleaning along with me. And today I'm compiling several of my fall cleaning videos into one super long cleaning marathon so that you don't have to click on to another video. You can just put this one on and clean right along with me. Whether you have company coming over for the holidays and you're preparing for that, or you're just cleaning your home for yourself and your own family, I have got you covered with today's video. I have been sharing these types of videos for several years and I'm so happy that y'all love them. But before we get into the cleaning, decorating, and homemaking motivation, let me know in the comments if you're cleaning along with me today or if you're just getting some motivation as you hang out with a friend and you'll put this up another day to clean together later. If you comment down below regularly, you know I love chatting with you guys in the comments and connecting with you. So I really appreciate when you take the time to do that. But without further ado, let's get into all the cleaning motivation and get our homes looking and feeling incredible. Hey guys, welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new here. Today we are decorating for fall and I am so ready for it. I feel like I've been in the stage of life where I'm really enjoying like each area that I'm in. I'm just trying to make the best of everything and not try to rush everything. But the summer has honestly been pretty difficult and I'm just ready for a new chapter and I'm feeling like fall is going to do that change for us. It's just going to kind of transition us into a new area in our lives and I'm so looking forward to that and we are going to do that by course cleaning up because we are a bit behind on the housework as usual yesterday was a pretty hard day i will kind of talk about that a little bit later on in the video as we're cleaning but i want to clean up everything and get everything organized and then we will go ahead and start decorating i cannot wait to just bring all that warmth and coziness in and this year i'm kind of decorating a little bit differently i'm doing less of like obvious fall and instead i want it to be like you walk into a space and you just feel the warmth and coziness but you're not like hit in the face with all the fall so I'm doing it a little bit differently this year but we're still using pretty much all of the same decorations that we used last year with just a few new additions I'm also going to be sharing some delicious and simple and healthy fall recipes so we have a lot to get done today let's go ahead and jump on into it Do you feel like hanging from a cross? Do you feel your paradise is lost? When you're lying wide awake, counting every mistake, do you hate what you've become? As you can see, I'm starting out in our kitchen. I think I was just feeling like eating the frog first this day or whatever that saying is. Basically, I wanted to tackle the biggest project first and just get it out of the way. And our kitchen, it was definitely the biggest project. As I mentioned earlier, housework has kind of fallen to the wayside the past few days and I really just needed to get a handle on this kitchen. So as usual, I'm just starting out by clearing off the countertops, clearing off all of the surfaces, wiping them down, and then once I get all that done, I'll start on the dishes, the dreaded sink full of dishes. I'm gonna tackle them all, and it will feel so good once I'm done. But another thing that I wanted to mention for any of you who've been here for quite a while, first of all, thanks for hanging out with me all the time. You guys are amazing. You guys may have noticed I am wearing jeans in today's video. Typically, I wear my beloved black leggings. They are super comfy, 
but I'm wearing jeans because I am finally fitting back into some old jeans that I had, which is super exciting for me because as you may know, I've been struggling with Hashimoto's for the past couple years, like three, four years, I don't even know anymore. It's been a long time and I finally have found something that's been working. I've been doing the AIP diet, which stands for autoimmune protocol, and it's just been working really well. I've been feeling a lot better and it's just been giving me like the first glimpse of hope. So I'm super thankful for that. That's definitely one thing that I'm feeling thankful for this season. Let me know down in the comments, what is one thing you're feeling extra thankful for this season? I torch the light and carry through the dark night. My story is the same as yours, different details in between. Lost my faith, once was blind, then I saw the light around the corner. You guys know I'm all about sharing those real life moments. I'm always sharing the mess in our house, like really truly how it is, but it's not always this messy. The last few days have just been really busy for us. And the reason for that is because our little black cat, Felix, if you guys are here all the time, I'm sure you know exactly who I'm talking about, that little black cat that always is in every shot. He's curious about every single thing that's happening in this house. Well, he started feeling sick the other day. We actually weren't even realizing which cat it was, but we started seeing some throw up around the house. And then the other morning we saw Felix walking around and he was very, very lethargic. So we took the boys to school. And by the time we got back, he had climbed up into our bathroom sink and he was laying there. He looked so, so sad and so sick. So we decided to go ahead and take him right into the vet and they told us that he had a bladder blockage. I guess this is very common in male cats but they said his was very extreme and if we would have waited a few more hours to bring him in, he probably would not have made it. Our vet actually ended up saying that she was very surprised that he made it through everything because of how severe his numbers were. He ended up having to stay the night several nights at a vet hospital and had a procedure done, had a catheter put in, like it was a whole big thing. But I'm so incredibly thankful and happy to say he is back home with us, he is doing better. He does unfortunately have about a 50% chance of developing kidney disease later on in his life, which will be fatal if that happens. So we're just praying that nothing is going to happen from here on out. He is going to be on like some specialty food, but I just wanted to update you guys because I shared over on Instagram and Facebook and also here on the community tab on YouTube. And a lot of you guys have just been asking about updates for him. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And I just wanted to say a big thank you for anyone who's been thinking about him, sending any positive vibes or prayers. We are just so grateful for all the love and support. And I'm just so thankful that he is finally back home with us. But that's like the main reason why everything kind of went to the wayside, especially housework. So it's not a huge deal, especially considering what's been going on. We're just going to go ahead and get caught up on everything today. Tell myself, pause and breathe. Every burden just releases. I don't have to live life on my own. 
Created by people's judgments Doubt and gift you're worthy of love But hope is still alive Cause there's a fire burning deep inside you Trust me, there is freedom You just gotta claim it Cherish it daily, yeah Place your hope in Jesus He's good at rearranging Replacing all your pain with joy That's faithful, you can save him Some may think it's minor But it's major, yeah So one thing I mentioned early on in this video is how I've just become the kind of person who really focuses on the space that you are at in your life. I'm not trying to look towards the future too much. I'm not trying to, you know, escape the area of life that I'm in right now. I'm just trying to kind of be present and live in the moment. And the thing that has come along with doing that is also just trying to focus on the things in life that make me happy, whether it's a big thing or it's a little thing. I just think those are the things that really just make your life enjoyable. And I think there's no reason not to enjoy all the little things, especially because that is really what our life is made up of. It's not these extravagant trips. It's not all these big moments that we have, but a lot of times it's just the small mundane things. So one of those mundane small things is bringing some baked good into our house and putting them on this cake pedestal. I always think it looks so pretty, but I always have imagined that if I have one of these, I have to be baking all the time and I'm just not in that stage of life where I'm baking constantly in our house. But I was at Home Goods a while back and I saw this beautiful wooden cake pedestal and I ended up picking it up and we have been filling it with croissants, even if they're from the store or maybe some baked goods that I might make or whatever it might be. It doesn't necessarily have to be homemade, but it's just made it so much fun having it in our kitchen. And I would just encourage you to do something simple like that for yourself. It really does not have to be anything big. Doing those things aren't going to make your life amazing or whatever. I mean, obviously you have to work at that with your own mindset, but doing those little things just add little bits of joy throughout your day. And I feel like that's so important. If you ask Kyle, he will tell you I am the worst with sayings. I always get them wrong or I just have no clue that they exist. So I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something like what can go wrong will go wrong or if it can go wrong, it does go wrong something. I don't know. Anyway, that is totally how we have felt this house has been. Now, don't get me wrong. We absolutely love our home and it's been really fun creating different rooms and decorating in here and just making over spaces and transitioning things. But I swear every single time something goes wrong or we open up something, we just find that we go down this rabbit hole of oh my gosh, what is going on in this house? Just the things that we need to do end up being so much more intense than we're realizing. For example, the hinge on our cabinet door was coming loose. So Kyle was like, okay, great. I'll take it off. I'll replace the screw or whatever needed to be replaced and put it back on. It'll be quick and easy. It ended up taking him an hour and a half and a trip to the hardware store. I don't even know all the things he had to do for it, but it was just one of those things where it should not have been this difficult, but something was done wrong. I think it had been put on wrong several times in the past and just never actually fixing the issue. So he went ahead and fixed it, but 
I am so ready to just stop having these issues because I just want something, like one project to go right. I don't know, it's just been driving us crazy lately because I feel like that's a lot of how we've been spending our time lately is just fixing things a little bit too intensely that should not need this much fixing. We have the kitchen clean. That was a whole process. It had gotten so bad as you saw, but it looks really good now. It feels really nice to have that space cleaned. And the living room, thankfully, is not really super dirty, just like tidy up some pillows, things like that. But now we are actually going to start undecorating the shelves. I typically like to start with just a completely blank slate. I'll still kind of hold out some of the pieces that I think I'm going to use still in the fall decor, just because a lot of it is super neutral, so it can still kind of tie in and make sense in the fall decor but I still am going to pull everything out go ahead and wipe down the shelves clean all of that and then we will jump into the decorating and I cannot wait to show you guys a few things that I got and then just having to style the decor that I've had for years So here I'm just starting to clear off our shelves. Now I like to take every single piece of home decor off of the shelving unit and then start from a blank slate. One, because it gives me the opportunity to like deep clean the shelves and everything, but mostly it's because I really like to start with a blank canvas. And even though I may be adding in some of this decor back onto the shelves, this just really helps me move things around. And it really helps when you're using a lot of the same decor, it helps it feel new and more exciting. So this is definitely a great decorating hack for you if you're using the same decor all the time and you want to create a new space that feels fresh and new. Be sure to take everything off the shelves or whatever you're decorating and that way everything's going to get kind of jostled around and moved around and it will end up looking like all new decor. So I feel like it is just tradition at this point that I share my story from our past. I have shared this story in so many decorating videos but I feel like I just can't help it because every single time I pull out our bins and totes of home decor, I just get this overwhelming feeling of gratefulness and it just makes me feel so thankful because 
there was absolutely a time in our life where we did not have any home decor. We did not have anything extra like that. It was basically just all the basics and all the necessities and that's totally fine. But it did make me feel sad and bummed at that time just because I would go to friends' homes and see all of their beautifully decorated walls and shelving and we just were not at that stage in our life. And I feel like probably a majority of us have been at that stage or are at that stage currently. And I just want to acknowledge that because if you were at that stage or if you can look back and remember stages like that where you just did not have a lot, it's definitely hard to be living in that and then see someone else who is not in that stage. And I feel like because I've been there, I really just appreciate everything that we have so much more now. But with saying all that, I want to take this time to give back to you guys. So we are going to be picking two winners to win $50 cash. And as usual, I'm going to keep this very, very simple. So I will have all of the details of this down in the description box, but all you have to do is make sure you are a subscriber because this is a subscriber giveaway. And then go ahead and leave a comment on this video as well as the next video that I post on my channel. And that is going to be it. Now be sure to keep your notifications on because I have had a hard time getting a hold of the winners in the past because I think notifications aren't on. So be sure to click that bell and have your notifications on and that way when I pick a winner I can reply back to your comment and we can get in touch on how to send you your giveaway winnings. So as always thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me and good luck. Okay, the built-ins are all cleared off. They are dusted, wiped down, everything. They are good to go. And what I've done is actually just pulled all the decor right here. And then I do have a few things that are like very spring or summer kind of that I'm definitely not going to be using for fall. So those things I'm going to end up finding my spring totes and sticking them in there. And then all of this stuff, it's basically just everyday decor. Like it's all very neutral. So some of this I'm going to be using up here, but I did want to just start with a total Totally blank slate. I want it to feel different than it did in the summer. You know, I want it to feel fresh and new and all these things. And you can do that with a lot of the same decor that you use. It just depends like how you place it when you move things around. And so this is going to help me get that same feeling with a lot of the same decor, not having to buy new stuff. But we are going to go ahead and pull out our fall decor tubs and kind of see what we have going on. And then we'll get to decorating the best part. I could definitely write a book about all of the amazing things that my mom taught me in my life and all the wonderful lessons that I've learned from her example. But one of the things that I've learned from her over the years and one thing that I knew when I was a kid that I always wanted to carry on doing what she had done was anytime something would get broken in the house, I would hear her say, ain't no big thing. And she would say it like in such a silly way and it just helped us not feel so guilty for breaking something because obviously we didn't do it on purpose. The person who broke something is already going to be feeling bad about it unless they're a cat of course but this is something that i've definitely tried to carry through with my kids and anytime they break something in the house i mean unless if it was on purpose or just being crazy like as long as it was an accident we never get them in trouble for that and we always just try to downplay how not important that thing is that they broke because like i said they are already feeling that guilt and there's no sense in making them feel even worse about something especially something that truly doesn't matter so even though it was just our cat that broke it and he has zero guilt i was just like you know it's already broken there's nothing to do about it time to just move forward so with all my fall decor i really wanted subtle pieces like this 
A great example of that are these framed pieces. These ones I actually did pick up this year, although most of the rest of everything is from previous years. But like I said, I didn't want something that says like, I love fall or fall is the best or whatever. I really just wanted those pieces that kind of spoke for themselves and just gave off a really warm feeling. So that's definitely where my mind was as I was picking pieces and also as I was decorating our shelves. I really just wanted things that gave this really warm feeling in our home. And I feel like the pieces that I ended up choosing definitely did that. Now, as usual, I will link all the things that I can find down below, but also, like I said, a lot of these pieces are from years prior, so I don't know exactly how many I'll be able to find online, but anything I can find, I will link below, as well as my previous fall clean and decorate with me videos, because those are going to have a ton of links in there as well. And you can just see how I've styled things differently over the years. to you no one else around just a space for two there's no better feeling when i'm close to you i look into your eyes as i'm ocean blue when i'm down it left my feet off the ground there's no other feeling when i'm next to you It never fails that I feel completely overwhelmed and lost when I start decorating a blank space, especially our built-ins. I feel like they always give me a run for my money, but my biggest advice for this is just to start and then it always tends to work itself out. You just want to kind of keep playing around with things. One thing to think about when you're decorating is the rule of threes. Typically when you style things in a group of three, it will look really nice. And then I also just like to play with heights and different textures and you can add different tones and colors and things like that but it really is just a lot of trial and error and if you stick with it long enough you will definitely find whatever was working for your space Let me know if you see what I mean about like warm decor that's giving off the fall vibe without literally saying I love fall. I feel like this is just where I'm at in my life right now. I just want things really subtle and really calm and peaceful. And the way this decor is, is totally giving me those vibes. It's just like very warm and cozy. Like it's just giving you a big hug. But you guys will have to let me know what you think, especially if you've seen my fall decorates from previous years. Let me know in the comments if there's a favorite that kind of sticks out to you. Building walls and closing bridges Saying all they want is me Sure I'm young but I can read through the lines We don't need your sympathy Just a little, little empathy I might go a little crazy But why can't you see We're standing here and watching as it falls apologizing every time i care too much i've been taught to keep my mouth shut don't make a scene i'm done with being nice and quiet because i know that will make a change yeah i'm old enough to read through the lines okay the built-ins are all styled and i love how it turned out 
This is the first year or the first time like for fall, I guess, that we have the green on the sides of the built-ins and also you painted this. It used to be the same color as the kitchen, which on camera, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's like very yellowy <laughs> cabinets versus this is just like really, really soft. It's actually the same color as our walls, which is pale oak, but I love how everything looks. I added a lot of pieces that are not specifically fall, but when you pair them with pumpkins and oranges and reds and things like that, they definitely pull that fall cozy vibe. So I love how it turned out and my little garland up here. So fun. I am going to go ahead and start putting away some of the decor. Obviously, a lot of this is just like your everyday decor. And then some of these things I am still going to be using in different areas of the house. So we do still have a little bit more decorating to do. And then I'm not sure how much more I'm going to be able to get done tonight. Hopefully, I can get a lot done. But I want to share a couple recipes with you guys still. And I'm wanting to do a DIY. But the boys are home. Luke has football tonight. I don't know all the other things. But I feel like we have a lot going on tonight. So we'll just see. We'll get as far as we can can but let's jump into the kitchen and kind of style it just slightly I don't like to over decorate the kitchen because we're in there all the time I don't need to be like you know bumping into decor all the time but just a few little pops here and there will make such a big difference and it just makes the whole space feel very cohesive so let's do that now These are the new bloom towels. This is their Halloween and fall collection. It's super cool the way they did it because on one side it's like Halloween. You get these little skeletons. And then on the other side it has like a pretty fall print. And it's, I believe, kind of that same way for all of these. This is my first time seeing them in person, but I saw them over on their Instagram page and they're so cute. This one I think is going to be my favorite. It's like ombre pumpkins. How cute is that? And then on the back, it has little bats, perfect for Halloween. Oh, and then this one, this one's adorable. So on the back, it has just like striped black and white. And on the front, it's these like adorable little ghosts with like little flower details. Super, super pretty. I love the color. These towels, the bloom towels are super absorbent, which I love. They're also like a really great size. They hold up incredibly well when you wash them. They just continually look new. And I do have a coupon code, but I will link this down below and I'll add that coupon code down there too. But I love these. In a recent video, someone had mentioned in the comments that they miss seeing my fresh flowers all the time on our counter. And honestly, me too. I really have missed that. I don't really know if it was super intentional to not do fresh flowers anymore or if it was just kind of one of those things that I ended up overlooking or forgetting about or just getting too busy to mess with. I don't know, but it really does add so much in your space, especially a kitchen. So these are just some little $5 bundles from Walmart. So super affordable. And I just went with an orange bundle and then a bundle with a few other different colors just to give it a little interest. And I love how it turned out. So I'm sure you guys will start seeing a bunch of fresh flowers in my kitchen again because it really does just make me so happy to have these.
This small addition of this little gold tray that I found at Target, along with this tinted glass candle and these two little pumpkins, this ended up being one of my favorites this season. And these cute little matchstick holders that were in that black box I showed off earlier. I really love these ones because they add function and they add style, which you know is always my favorite thing when you're able to pair those two things together. But sometimes it really is just about those small little tweaks that you add in those things can sometimes make the biggest impact. Let me know if anything has totally caught your eye from today's video, like any of the decor. It could be from this year or last year or whatever. Let me know if there's anything that you're totally loving and just if you have like a favorite item. the windows in the pane get the dust off my chest from the letters that I gave you it didn't take when you left all oh, you left all of your boxes I thought you would have wanted to remember when you stayed but you just threw it all Sad me. All right, it is a new day. We ran out of time once the kids got home. We got into football practice and just all the things, but we did get a ton done yesterday. We got everything cleaned and it's still pretty much clean today. We also got, I would say 90% of the decorating done. We do still have a little bit more to do, but today we are going to do a fall DIY. This is super budget friendly and it's going to make a pretty big impact. And then I also am going to make those two recipes that I promised you guys. One is is an apple muffin and the other is a delicious like fall autumn inspired sheet pan dinner super super delicious and easy i love sheet pan dinners like one of my go-to's and then once we're done with that i want to put up the fall diy project that we do and then also head upstairs like as you're rounding the corner in that little cove area and decorate that for fall i did that last year and it ended up being like one of my very favorite areas in the home but it's just an area that you do see a lot anytime you walk up and down the stairs or when you're at their front door or anything and it's just super fun so i want to kind of change that up and do a little bit different than i did last year but still make it really really cozy and inviting so we don't have a ton to get done but we have enough let's get into it For this DIY, you're just going to need a canvas. You can get any size. This is a large one. It's 24 by 36. I got it at Walmart 
for under $12. So it really isn't super expensive, especially considering like how large this one is. And then next you have some spackling. This one is one that I've used before, but this one's really cool because it's actually pink. And then once it dries, it turns white and that's how you know it's good. Then next you're going to need some putty knives. These I just picked up from Walmart, but you can get them from like any hardware store. I also have this trowel and this is really just if you're going to do like the same style that I'm doing, but you can also use just the putty knives and style it that way. And then I am going to paint it. So I got like some orange and tan paint just to keep it full and then some painter's tape. So let's go ahead and get into it. That's okay. We're in motion. I can feel the sway. There's nothing to fear, my friend. Oh no, it's the natural road out of. When the ground is shaking. So it turns out I kind of needed to thin this out. This is just spackle, like I said, but at first it was just feeling so thick. And I think because the canvas was so large, it was really hard to pour out and just get it all spread into an even layer. But that's what I'm doing here is just spreading the spackle into an even layer. I will say I have done a DIY with spackle before. That one was a lot easier because I think it was like an eight by 10 or a nine by 12 canvas or something. So it was just a lot smaller and a lot easier to work with. So. If this is your first time doing it, definitely try out the smaller ones. They are a lot easier to do. Okay, so this is how it's looking so far. I'm gonna show you guys an up close. It is not perfect. It's not meant to be perfect. And you can do this like so many different ways, so many different styles. I've done this before on a much smaller canvas. And I will say that is a lot easier. It also takes a lot less spackle, but I just want this to be like a bigger statement piece. I'm hoping it'll turn out good. But I think with this kind of thing, like you kind of can't make it turn out bad. Or at least that's what I'm going with right now. So I meant to tape off the edges because I wanted a clean line on the edges, but I forgot. So we're gonna go with it because once I realized it, like I had done like two of the edges. This is what we have so far. And then I'll kind of like style it from here. I have to say I learned a lot <laughs> through this project and I think if I did it again I could do it a lot better but in the end I did end up loving how everything turned out and I was like very unsure about it for basically 90% of the time until the very end and then I was like oh Okay, actually this turned out and I really love it. So if you do try this project out and you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like it's not turning out, definitely just continue on with it because a lot of times I think that's pretty natural to feel that way, but you will probably end up loving it just like I did. That did not go <laughs> quite as planned. I think it'll still turn out good. It's just different than I was expecting. I think a lot of it was I needed to water it down because it was pretty hard to spread in the beginning. And I feel like those are some of the areas that didn't go as well, but I can play with it too, like once it dries. I'm gonna set this outside so that it can dry a lot faster. And then while this is drying, we're gonna go in and make some recipes. All right, we are going to start out with the sheet pan recipe. So we're gonna start out by preheating the oven to 400 degrees. And then this recipe is kind of like any sheet pan recipe for the most part, like you can just substitute whatever you have. Just kind of mix and match whatever you have and whatever you like. But I'm gonna show you guys the things that we're gonna add in. So I have some sausage. This is chicken and apple sausage. You can just find this at Walmart. I have garlic, green beans, Brussels sprouts, carrots, sweet potato, red onion, and then some fingerling potatoes. And then for the seasoning and dressing, I have some olive oil or avocado oil, some maple syrup, Dijon mustard, and Italian seasoning. And then at the end, we'll kind of season it with salt and pepper to taste. 
So just like all the recipes that I share, I always add that recipe card into the video so that you can go back, pause, and screenshot the recipe. And then from there, you can either save it to an album in your phone or you can print it off, just whatever makes it easiest for you. And then I also have my recipes over on my website, which I always have linked down below. But this one, like I said, is super, super easy. So all you're going to do is start out by washing all of your veggies. And then I'm just going to chop up my tougher or harder veggies, the ones that take a little bit longer to cook, like for example, the Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, carrots, anything like that, but you don't want to cook everything all at once. Like you don't want to add in broccoli or green beans, things that take just a few minutes. We are going to give these Brussels sprouts and potatoes a little bit extra time to cook. Once you have your first set of veggies all chopped up, you're just going to add them right onto a baking dish and then drizzle a little bit of olive oil on them and then sprinkle some Italian dressing along with just a little bit of pepper and salt. Now I always recommend going a little easy on the salt when you're baking because you can always add more but you cannot take any away. And I totally forgot that I wanted to add in carrots so I went ahead and chopped those up and then added them right into the other veggies, mix them up a little bit and then you're going to pop that in a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Now while those first veggies are in the oven roasting, we are going to get started on the remainder of the veggies that we're adding in along with the sausage. So the first thing I'm doing here is just chopping up some fresh garlic and this little tool, I have had this for years. It works so incredibly well. A lot of times I just use the jarred garlic that is already pre-minced, but if you do fresh garlic, you need this in your life. It's so much easier to clean and it's really, really quick and easy to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this one linked down below in case if you wanna grab one for your home. Next, you're just going to chop up the remainder of your veggies and try to cut them all about the same size. So just get them into like bite-sized pieces. And then once you're done chopping the rest of the veggies, the potatoes and Brussels sprouts that are already in the oven should be cooked enough that we can go ahead and add these ones right on top. Now once you have all of your ingredients sitting on your baking sheet, you're going to go ahead and make the little dressing. This dressing could not be easier. It's just one part maple syrup and one part Dijon mustard. Here I'm using about a third of a cup of each. Add them both into a small bowl and mix them up until they're both combined. And then you're just going to drizzle about three quarters of this over the entire baking dish. And then I like to save maybe a quarter of it just to drizzle on top once they're all done baking. Here you can go ahead and add any additional seasoning that you want. I'm just adding a little bit of salt and pepper and some more of that Italian seasoning. So now we're just going to let those cook in the 400 degree oven for about 15 more minutes until everything is nice and roasted and also fork tender. And then in 15 minutes, we'll come back and check on them. Next up is these delicious apple muffins. Now these are not overly sweet, but they are very, very filling and they have zero processed sugar in them. So definitely a good one to have for breakfast in the morning or on the go. For this recipe, you're going to need gluten-free flour or wheat flour, coconut oil, honey, baking soda, one apple, three eggs, the juice of half a lemon or one tablespoon of lemon juice, cinnamon, and salt. To start this recipe out, you are going to grab a medium mixing bowl as well as a smaller mixing bowl. And into the larger one, you are going to add in all of your dry ingredients. So that's two cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, a little sprinkle of sea salt, and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Then go ahead and give that a good mix until everything is well combined. And then you can go ahead and set that bowl to the side for a minute.
Now for the smaller bowl, we are going to focus on the wet ingredients. As usual with a baking recipe, you have your wet and dry ingredients separate. But the first thing you're going to want to do is start grating your apple. Now I could not for the life of me find my grater. So I'm just actually using my mandolin and using the little slicer section. So it makes like little shreds of an apple. And then because they're not going to be quite as shredded as I would have liked, I just went ahead and chopped them up a little bit better with my knife. I will say that doing this kept the apples a lot more moist moist and it didn't release as much juice so if you are shredding it as you normally would you will want to go ahead and just drain that and make sure that you're not adding in a ton of extra liquid once you have your apples all prepped you're going to add them right into that smaller mixing bowl along with the juice of half a lemon or like i said one tablespoon of lemon juice if you just have it in the jar then add in three eggs one quarter cup of honey and two tablespoons of coconut oil or butter. I am not eating any dairy right now and so I'm just adding in some coconut oil but you can definitely use butter if you prefer that. Now once you have all of your wet ingredients added into the bowl, go ahead and give that a really good mix until everything is nice and combined and then you're going to pour all of your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients and softly fold those in until everything is well incorporated. Next, go ahead and grab a muffin tin. You can either spray it with some oil or you can use muffin liners. And then you're just going to fill up the muffin cups about three quarters of the way up. I'm just using a scoop to make it extra easy here. And depending on how big you make your muffins, this recipe will make between nine and 12 muffins. I got 11 out of this batch, but keep in mind as you're making this recipe, this is definitely not going to be a very thin batter. It's going to be super thick. So don't feel like you need to be adding in more liquid to make it a little runnier, but it is going to be so moist and so delicious once it's out of the oven. And I love those big chunks of apple that you can see right in the batter. So you're just going to pop this into a 325 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes or until a fork or toothpick can be inserted in the center and it comes out clean. And I'll show you when they're done how they look. They are amazing. You guys have to make these. We're all done cooking. We're just waiting for the muffins to bake. So while we're waiting on that, I'm going to go out and check on our little DIY project. It's looking pretty good. You can kind of see it out there. It's totally not fall out here in Arizona. It's like 100 degrees still, but that's looking really nice and feeling really nice. So it's nice and dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. This kind of thing you can totally leave unpainted, but because I wanna do it for fall, I just wanna paint it and give it a little bit of color like later on. I could even like repaint it something really neutral and use it for a different holiday, so. Oh my gosh, you guys, these have become one of my favorite muffins. They are so incredibly delicious. They're perfect. If you eat butter, you can go ahead and cut them and just put some butter inside. Or for me, I'll just add a little bit of coconut oil, but no matter how you have these, they are just so tasty and they're also really filling and satisfying. If you guys make either of these recipes that I've shared today, go ahead and tag me over on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see what you're making and how you're liking it. Our walls are super neutral. They're like light stone kind of color. And so I wanted this to pop, but I'm just feeling like it's a little bit too orange for the size of it. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray paint it a little bit. And this is heirloom white. It's like probably my favorite. It's not full white, but it's just like 
almost like a stone. I'm hoping this DIY isn't like a bust, but it is pretty cool. I've definitely learned like some tricks for using that notched trowel. I've never done the notched one before and that was a little bit trickier than I was expecting. We'll try it, we'll see how it goes. That sign or DIY is supposed to go here. That was my plan for it. I think I'm liking it better, but it's hard to tell because it is outside in the like different lighting outside. So once it dries, we'll bring it in here. I'm also gonna change out this reeds, but I can't do really any of that until I get the sign figured out. We're gonna go ahead, jump up here and tackle this little cove area. Like I said, we did this last year and I love how it turned out. It was so cute and it just added so, so much to the space. So I wanted to make this canvas pop since I ended up making it more neutral. I really wanted it to kind of stand out from the wall a little bit more. And so I just used some extra green paint that we had from our built-ins and our accent walls. And it was also a really great way to bring that built-in color over to this wall and just kind of transfer it around the house and just make everything feel even more cohesive. Alright, you guys know I love pillow covers. I talk about them all the time, but they are going to be one of your best friends when it comes to decorating, especially if you decorate often or you decorate for different seasons. It's awesome because one, they are typically cheaper than buying a whole pillow at the store. Also, you literally use the exact same inserts for years and years. Like I have used these for so many years and I will continue to use them for so many more years. And all you have to do is buy different covers and then you can store the covers. So you also take up a lot less space when you're not using them and they make the exact same impact that a regular pillow would make. So there's really no reason not to use them, but I typically get all of my pillow inserts and pillow covers off of Amazon. I've just found they typically have really good deals and also a great variety. So I will link the ones that I use today down in the description box. And then I also have like a whole category over on my Amazon favorites of several of the different pillow covers that I've used over the years. So if you're kind of starting out with pillow covers, definitely check that out and that can kind of help you get Get started. I still find Wiley's house riding on my bike with eyes closed. I could name every girl that he took out, and from my memory, dial his house phone. Can you take me back when we were just kids? We weren't scared of getting older, yeah. Cause no one knows you like they know you, but no one probably ever will. You can grow up, make new ones, but truth is, there's nothing like old. You can't make old friends mm, Yeah I can still feel the windows down Listen to Jimmy Eat World Riding three wide on Blake's bench See, yeah My God, it's been ten years now Can you take me back where we were just kids? I 
that is going to be everything for my fall clean to decorate for 2022. I love how everything turned out this year. Like I said before, I just feel like it's so warm and cozy and inviting and definitely my most favorite way that I've ever decorated for fall in the past. Let me know in the comments when you're planning to decorate if you haven't decorated already. And also be sure to let me know if you end up trying either of the recipes that I shared today because those are seriously so incredible. I feel like anyone would love them. But if you do try them out, definitely tag me over on Instagram or let me know in the comments here on YouTube. Whatever way you can let me know, I'd love to hear. I hope you guys have the most amazing day. I'm so grateful that you spent this time hanging out with me. Also, just a quick reminder, do not forget to get entered into that giveaway. Again, all you have to do is be a subscriber and then make sure to leave a comment on this video as well as the next video that I post here on my channel. And if this video helped you get into fall mode and you want a little more fall inspiration, I'm going to link my fall inspired playlist right here. This will have everything fall. It has fall homemaking videos with tons more fall recipes. It also has some more fall decorating videos, just all the things that scream fall. You're going to find that here in this playlist. So check that out next and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. were in high school when they met and things got kind of awkward with sparks in the air he would stare at her in class and she would try to act cool but it was obvious like ooh, they would be together One day she said, write me a love song Cause I know you'll make it beautiful And maybe I'll call you my sweetheart And promise nobody can steal me away Then I am yours Cause I want you and I wanted you to know I don't know about you guys, but for me, fall is my very favorite time of year. It's just so cozy and warm, and I feel like I imagine it being slow just because it kind of goes along with that cozy feeling, but in all reality, fall gets very busy and hectic and chaotic between all the different sporting events you might have, all the family functions, of course you have the holidays upcoming, and fall can just become like a very busy time of year. And so today I had, as you can tell, a lot to get done. Our home had kind of gotten away from us because let's be real, when does it not get away from you? Or at least I'll speak for myself and say my home consistently gets away from me and that's just kind of the stage of life we're in. But I really just wanted to take things slow today and do a little bit of slow homemaking. I really wanted to care for our home, but also make sure to enjoy the process and just kind of take my time throughout it all and let life feel a little bit slower on this day. So I hope no matter what you have going on today, you can take a few moments to yourself and just kind of take things a little bit slower, even if it's just mentally making it a little bit slower of a day and just be able to enjoy the coziness of fall. And if it's still warm where you live, don't worry, you are in good company. It's very warm here in Arizona, but inside I decorated for fall. Everything is feeling nice and cozy inside and we're just making these fall vibes happen even if the outside weather is not really cooperating. So with that, I will pop in here and there on today's video, but I have a lot of really fun, good vibe songs today. So I hope you guys enjoy watching, getting some cleaning motivation and just hanging out with a friend. Something about the way that you're always smiling Or seeing the way you're looking at me tonight Will it just hit me 
Here I'm just wiping down our table with a Method wood cleaner. This is in the almond scent and I love this scent. It is like the perfect transition scent into fall for me because it's very kind of warm, but it's not those traditional fall scents that you might see. Now I do use this cleaner all year round and I do love it for cleaning all of our wood, but I'm sure in the next few weeks I'm going to be breaking out like my full on fall scents like apple cider is one of my favorites. And there's another one that I cannot remember, but it's a Mrs. Meyer scent. If you know what I'm thinking of, let me know in the comments. But also let me know what is your favorite go-to fall scents. Well, it isn't about a feeling that surely fading. smoke it breathes No, there's more to this life than we thought that there was Tell me over again just how unlikely it is to fall in right Hand washing dishes for me can be so calming, especially when I treat it as a relaxing moment and not just checking off a chore on my to-do list. And that was a really big focus for me on this day. As I cleaned our home, I just took my time and I let myself really enjoy homemaking and taking care of our home. And honestly, it ended up being one of the best cleaning days that I've had in a really long time, just because of like that little tiny shift in mindset. Now I know we can't always just move slow. There are a lot of days where I can't take my time when I'm homemaking, when I'm taking care of the house, but I can slow my mind down as I do these chores and just kind of enjoy them a little bit more. You guys know I talk about this all the time and it's a lot easier said than done trust me because I preach about this all the time but it's something I'm constantly working on but just like anything in life mindset is really going to make or break the situation so if you have felt really overwhelmed with your to-do list or you know whatever's been going on in your life take a step back maybe try to reevaluate things and see where you can flip your mindset to be something more positive and where you can feel grateful because if you are feeling grateful for something, then you're going to enjoy it a lot more and you're not going to feel like that's such a daunting task. Instead, it's going to end up feeling like a blessing.
This is a great example of something that I actually would not have noticed most days as you kind of rush through your to-do list, just getting things done and checking them off the list and quickly moving on to the next project. But because I was kind of taking my time as I was drying our knives, I realized how dinged up and not sharp several of them were. Now our main knives that we use every single day, like my big chopping knives, those I sharpen pretty regularly, but the smaller ones specifically kind of were getting neglected. And so I took just a couple extra minutes. It didn't take much time at all. And I sharpened them and I've been noticing a big difference. So there is some other benefits to slow homemaking other than just enjoying the day better and your mindset work and everything, you can actually get a lot more extra little things done when you do this. Let me know in the comments if you ever take days like this or an hour or whenever you're doing your homemaking chores and you're doing your cleaning, if you ever just kind of take time to be a little bit more present in your mind when you're homemaking. So behind me here, you can kind of see a little sneak peek of our living room and how I decorated for fall this year. I have to say, I love how everything got decorated this year. I love just how cozy and not really in your face everything was, but you walk in and you just feel like sitting down, lounging around, and it's just been my favorite way I've ever decorated. So if you haven't seen my fall clean and decorate video yet, go ahead and check that out. I will leave a link for it down below. And also in that video, I've included a giveaway. So all you have to do to enter into that giveaway is just be sure to comment on the last two videos that I shared, one being the fall clean and decorate, and then one was a house projects video. But of course, all the information for the giveaway is going to be shared in that fall clean and decorate video. We had plans and it was your biggest dream, yeah. Then I didn't call for weeks. Thought the love wasn't for me, no. I still think of you. We are making some good progress. We have the kitchen, like surface area clean, and also the living room. There is still some stuff that I want to get done back in this area, but I wanna go ahead and jump on into our bedroom for a little bit. One, because once you stay cleaning one certain area for a while, it just starts to become like very monotonous. So I kinda of wanna change the scenery up a little bit. And then I also just want to get our bedroom done and like get the wash going before I start back in here and attack me some other things. So we're gonna go ahead and head into the bedroom and get some stuff done in there. Thank you. 
here we go again with another unmade bed midway through the day. I have been still continuing to struggle with making my bed again for years and years and years without fail. I made my bed every single morning and it just felt so good. And I always have shared with you guys how much more motivated I was throughout the day and all the benefits that came from having a made bed in the morning. And then several months ago, I stopped getting into the habit of making our bed every day and I just have not been able to quite grasp it. I'll go like a week where I'll make it all the time or maybe even two whole weeks where I'll make it every day, but it's just not become like part of my morning ritual anymore. And I really want to get back to that because I really do feel like there is so much benefit to it. And there's also just nothing like climbing into a freshly made bed at the end of a long day and your sheets are all nice and crisp. So if you have any tips for getting back into a habit like that, let me know in the comments. If not, that's okay. I'm just going to continue working on it. And when I figure it out finally, because I am determined I will figure out how to get this back into my routine, I will let you guys know what ends up working for me. So once I stripped off all of the dirty sheets, got the bed made with the nice clean sheets, including our freshly washed blanket that we lay on the very foot of the bed. I love having that blanket, by the way. I know it's like an extra touch that just kind of adds to the whole bed making process, but I just love the cozy look of it. It's just so, so nice. And especially in the winter when I get a little bit extra cold, it's nice to be able to pull that up and just snuggle with it. But anyway, I got the whole bed made and I went into our closet to grab the dirty bed sheets and the rest of our whites and I just wanted to get them thrown into the washing machine and started and of course there's never just an empty washing machine I don't know about you guys but there's always another load that needs to be continued on through the washing cycle so that means I had to swap out the rest of the wash including the boys clothes which we'll be sorting out a little bit later on and then this powder that I'm adding into all of our whites is molly suds I get this from Grove Collaborative but you can also find it on Amazon. I will have it linked down below on both websites, but I love it because it helps keep our whites super white without using bleach. I think it's so fun every time we have like some kind of sporting shirt like an nfl shirt in the videos you guys always comment like go pack go or recently our youngest son had a Steelers shirt from his flag football team and you guys were commenting about that but let me know what football team your family goes for here in our house we all started out as packers fans because kyle has been a packers fan for 
most of his life. And now we all are kind of like default Cardinals fans as well because we live here in Phoenix. Uh, Of course, if the Packers and Cardinals are going together, we will definitely still root for the Packers. But this year, Luke has actually jumped over to the Chiefs. And then because Noah played flag football as the Steelers, he has become kind of a Steelers fan. And then Liam is like still Cardinals and Packers. So it's been kind of fun that we actually have a few different teams that our house goes for. But definitely for me and Kyle, we are still Packers. If you saw either last week's video or the week prior, you probably remember that our little black cat Felix was actually at the vet's office for several days because he was having a urinary blockage. It was actually really scary because his kidney levels were super high and they weren't sure if he was going to make it. Thankfully, he did make it and he is back home doing fine. But one of the things that he's had to do now is actually switch his cat food into a prescription food. And the first few days of this transition were a bit difficult and we were just finding these little throw up spots around the house. So it gave me the opportunity to use my new little carpet cleaner that I got last time and I loved it. I didn't necessarily love cleaning up all of the cat throw up, but this little spot cleaner works super, super well. If you are in the market for one, I'm going to link this down below. It's just incredible how quick and easy it is. And you'll see in just a minute when I'm all done carpet cleaning, but it actually has a self-cleaning feature and it's incredible. You know, it's just one of those little things that we get super excited about as a homemaker. Once I got our rug vacuumed with our regular vacuum, I just went in with our cordless Roborock Dyad. This is a wet and dry vacuum. It's amazing because it vacuums your floor and mops them at the same time. You guys have seen me use this a lot of times, but it literally cuts your vacuuming and mopping time in half because it does it both at the same time. And every time I use this, I always get questions how it does with hair. And as you can see, it does very, very well sucking up the hair. It just has a little filter that traps all of that debris and it's really easy to rinse out whenever you're done using it. Someone who makes her happy 
I'm a ghost in these walls. It never fails. When I use a glass cleaner and paper towel to wipe our windows, I always find myself missing my e-cloths because I swear e-cloths never streak. They just keep your mirrors and windows looking crystal clear. And unfortunately, I actually didn't notice the streaks on the outside until I went back inside and I'd put everything away. So I ended up having to go back later on and re-clean them again with my e-cloths. So if you are looking for something that leaves your windows and mirrors streak-free, definitely check out e-cloths. They are incredible. Because she won't be mine, I listen when she talks, I watch her when she walks. She's giving me these feelings that I've never felt before, but she will never know. That I love her so well. She's with somebody else and I all right, this is that time. We have to go pick up the kids really quick from school, but then once we get back, we are going to finish cleaning and get the house feeling nice and tidy. What you learned about? What you learned about? Um, well, um, whoa, girl. Oh, that was way off. Take a drink of my cigarette. Breathe me out. Breathe you in. Yeah. Take a bite of my burger, babe. Once the boys got home, we just had them help sort through their clothes that we had washed and that way they could get them all put away in their bedrooms and it really didn't take long. It took a little bit of convincing to have them do this happily, but like I said, it didn't take long at all and then once they were done with this, they were free to get an after school snack or chill for a bit, just kind of whatever. But speaking of after school snacks, we have been kind of running into the issue recently of enjoying your after school snack and then not being hungry for dinner. I don't know if that's an issue for anyone else, but if it is, let me know if you have found any fix to this. I don't really want to say, no, you can't have any snacks after school because I'm sure they're kind of hungry, but also we really need dinner to be eaten and we just need them to be hungry by the time it is ready for dinner. So let me know any tips you have in the comments. kids are at home now we got their laundry put away but it never fails once everybody gets home and we're all in the house it just gets a little bit crazy so it's been like probably like 45 minutes or so since we got all the laundry done we had a few things to get taken care of but before we head off to luke's football practice i want to at least get our microwave and our oven cleaned because i don't know when the last time i cleaned them was but it's been far too long so we're gonna go ahead and tackle that So many real life moments in this video and it's not even like a super deep cleaning video but they're just we're just full of them today. I think this just reminds me how badly I really need to get back to being consistent in my weekly cleaning routine. I think I honestly just need to completely scrap my old cleaning routine and start up with a new one because whenever I am consistent with my weekly cleaning routine 
things like this just never pile up. And currently it is a never ending list of the things that I'm falling behind on. Anyway, that's kind of another talk for another day. So here in the microwave, I am just using the Dawn Power Wash dish spray to clean the microwave and it works super, super well. Of course, you can use vinegar or heat up some lemon in there and those little tricks work great as well. But if you don't have like a whole ton of stuck on messes, just simple Dawn Power Wash dish spray works super great. Now there is my e-cloths coming in hot with zero streaks as usual. This is what I should have used on my glass door in my bedroom, but I learned my lesson, I think. <laughs> I know there's a way to get this whole door off and I feel like if I could get that off I could actually take this out and I think there's gonna be a lot of gross stuff under there so if you know how to do this let me know in the comments I know it can be done I am very close I feel but I don't know so if you guys know how to take your oven door off let me know like send me a link send me a video just explain it in the comments I don't know I'm really curious because I think I'm gonna find something really disgusting underneath there If you missed last week's video, it was a house projects video where we got several new to us items from Facebook marketplace, including this new to us fridge. And we also picked up some other used furniture pieces for our upcoming loft makeover. But I have loved reading through the comments on that video because so many of you guys have told me that that has either been a new favorite video or one of your favorite videos that I've ever shared. I think it must have just had like really good vibes in it or something, or you guys enjoyed watching all of the struggles that we came into with all of these like new to us items. But either way, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below for you guys. Definitely check it out. And also we always have our house projects playlist, which kind of shares the different things that we've done to our home since moving in last year.
Every time I mop our floors, I'm always like, man, I need to do this like every other day because our floors are so dark that when they are clean, they look so incredible. But then it's like a day or two later, they look just as dirty as they'll look in 10 days because they just immediately show every little imperfection. Now, I don't think I'm realistically going to be able to get around to mopping our floors every other day. But when we do have them mopped, I just want to take a little extra time and like admire them a little bit because they do look so nice and shiny and super, super clean. Let me know in the comments, how often do you mop your floors if you have hard floors? Or if you have carpet, let me know in the comments how often you vacuum your floors. Thankfully, we have our Roborock vacuum that vacuums our floors daily. And that is just a must because we do have so many pets. So that is going to be everything for today's cozy fall clean with me. I really hope that this video was able to not only motivate you, but also just help you relax and kind of decompress. Hopefully you're having a great start to your week or whatever day you are watching this. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful that you took the time out of your day to watch this video and just spend some time with me. If you're still needing a little bit more motivation or if you're in the middle of a project and you just want some more company, I am going to link this throwback video. This video is several years old, so some of you may have not even ever seen this old house, but it is a video that a lot of you guys actually found me from and I love that. So if you still need some more motivation, definitely tap on this video on the right side of the screen. And either way, I will see you right back here for another video very soon. Bye guys. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some rainy day cleaning motivation along with several super cozy recipes. These are all family friendly recipes and they are perfect for fall or really any time of the year. And we are going to start things out today with an autumn crock pot chili recipe and then we'll get into some relaxing cleaning. I have this recipe card right here on the screen so you can go ahead and screenshot that and print that out or save that for another time whenever you're ready to make this recipe. But this is an incredibly easy recipe. All you're going to be doing is chopping up your onions. Go ahead and cook up some chicken. I just had some shredded chicken that I had made the night before but you can use canned chicken or just any leftover chicken that you might have. Then you're going to drain two cans of navy beans and add all the ingredients into the crock pot. Give that a good stir and then cook on low for about seven hours or on high for three to four hours. This is going to make your kitchen smell just like fall and it's perfect whether you enjoy it today or you enjoy it throughout the week. It's one of those recipes that definitely gets better and better with time as the flavors melt together. But I really hope you guys enjoy this one. And I also hope you enjoy all of the today's video and just feel relaxed and motivated and also get a few new recipe ideas.
child I know You're hurt and you can't let go It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt I know you tried so hard Ooh, I know you've done your part It's not fair You did your time How much longer so today we are starting off in the kitchen. As you can see, it has gotten away from me as per usual. You guys know how this goes, but it's never too far gone. You can always bring it back. So I'm just starting to clear the counters. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually popping in my AirPods and I'm going to be listening to an audiobook. You guys will have to let me know if you ever listen to audiobooks or podcasts or music while you're cleaning. My favorite go-to is usually an audiobook. I usually go for like the self-help books, things like that. I don't typically listen to novels on audiobooks, but you guys will have to let me know if you have any recommendations because I feel like I've listened to a ton and I'm always looking for more. Also, be sure to stay tuned because later on in the video, I am going to be sharing several more recipes. These are all going to be pretty healthy recipes, and they're also going to be gluten and dairy-free in case if you have any allergies. But if you don't have any allergies, don't worry because they are just so delicious. Anyone's going to love them. How much longer will you suffer in this life? But don't give up. Hold on tight It'll be alright Putting away the dishes is something that typically is our kids' job. It's one of their daily chores, but I've talked about this with you guys before. I feel like we've been struggling with getting ready for school in the morning and also getting the dishwasher unloaded and doing all their things that they need to do before school. Last year, somehow we managed to keep this task going, but this school year, it just seemed to be hard to get ready on time and still get their chores done before they go to school. And then by the time they're home from school and free to do the dishwasher, I've usually tackled it so that I can go ahead and start loading it for the day. So I don't know, I'm sure we'll get kind of more in the swing of things as the year goes on. But for now, we're just kind of taking things day by day. Some days they get around to it, some days I do. But one thing I mentioned recently is I'm really wanting to get back into like my cleaning routine. So I'm actually going to be working on getting that situated and getting that really kind of under control. And then hoping that I can share that with you guys in the coming weeks. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing like a new cleaning routine from me because like I said, I've just been struggling and I really think I just need to completely throw out my old cleaning routine and just start from scratch and find something that's really going to work for me right now. Before I get the dishes going, or before I hand wash the dishes, I guess, I'm going to actually be switching out my hand washing, dishwashing station area. I have my favorite fall scent, which is the apple cider from Mrs. Myers. I love this stuff. And if you have been here for several years, you probably remember this guy. I pulled him out of my cleaning cabinet and I'm going to be going back to my bubble up dish brush. I used to use this every single day. 
like four years and I just decided to kind of change it up but I just wanted to go back to this because I really did love it and I haven't used this in a long time also it gives me the opportunity to use one of my favorite scents and also honestly it is a lot cheaper to do this because you use like so much less soap so we're gonna go ahead and change that out and i'm excited to get back into my bubble dish brush I've talked about this so many times with you guys where I feel like it really is so beneficial to change things up in homemaking and just find new ways to make things feel more fresh and not so monotonous because definitely homemaking can feel like you're doing the same thing day after day and it can feel very boring sometimes. And so just kind of finding those small ways to make changes, whether you're making changes to your cleaning routine or you're adding in some different cleaning utensils or cleaning scents, things like that. The dish brush that I'm adding back in, that's just a great example of that. It's not like it's making a huge change. It's not anything crazy, but it's just kind of changing up a little bit in my routine. And I feel like those kind of things actually make a pretty big difference or at least for me they do I don't know if it's the same for you guys but it definitely doesn't go unnoticed for me another thing that really helps if you're kind of feeling in a rut with homemaking is shifting your focus and just taking that time to slow your mind down I actually shared this a lot in last week's video and talked about this throughout that video so if you're kind of feeling in a rut I'm going to go ahead and link that one down below for you guys but that video was just super calming with a lot of chit chat and some mindset stuff but let me know in the comment, what tip would you share on ways to enjoy homemaking more or kind of being more successful in homemaking? I feel like we all have so many great things to share. So what would be like your number one tip that you would share with someone? So a few weeks ago, I shared our fall clean and decorate, and that was kind of the kickoff to fall here in our home. If you've been here for a while, you know we live in Arizona, so outside is not necessarily fall, but inside we are full-blown fall mode. We are trying to keep things cozy. We have football on in the background. We have crockpot meals going, candles burning all the time. Like We are just doing all those things, and I've been loving sharing a lot of fall videos with you guys. Let me know in the comments if there's any fall kind of video that you would like to see from me or even if it's not fall themed let me know in the comments what kind of content and videos would be most helpful for you to see from me also because i'm always just trying to share videos that are the most helpful for you guys let me know if there's like a specific video length that you would like to see a lot of times i've been getting in the habit of sharing a little bit longer videos like 40 minute videos or so but I definitely can share some shorter ones if that's all you have time for. Or if you're really digging the long videos, let me know that too. That way I can just be sure to be sharing things that are the most helpful for you guys. When my eyes can't see When I can't seem to carry on I know your hand is guiding me I know your hand is guiding me 
so as I'm editing and just seeing that little crack on the bottom of the counter, like underneath the countertop on the middle of the screen, I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just reminding me about like the makeovers that we're hoping to do. One of them being our kitchen that has just been, you know, kind of on the back burner because of other things going on. But that did remind me we actually did start on Luke's bedroom this week. And just like any other makeover or house projects, almost immediately we ran into hiccups. It just never fails. That's always how it goes. So we had to cut filming short on the first day and put that on hold. But we are getting things worked out later today, actually. And we will be getting back into filming tomorrow. So if all goes as planned from here on out, you guys are actually going to be seeing Luke's bedroom your makeover on Monday just this coming week and then we're planning to just continue sharing those like on the next Thursday and Monday just to kind of get those shared out to you guys really quickly but I cannot wait and the boys are so beyond excited to finally be getting their rooms like styled and just really functional for them so if you are not already subscribed and you don't have that notification bell on be sure that you click the subscribe button that way you don't miss out on those makeover videos along with all the other videos that will be coming out soon on the channel. Oh my gosh, as soon as I saw this clip of putting the fall garland up on our mantle, 
It just made me feel so excited for Christmas. I know we are still a ways away and I'm not rushing things for sure, but I am just so excited for when Christmas arrives. I absolutely love fall. It's one of my favorite times of year for sure, but there's something about Christmas. It's just so magical and so family oriented. I just feel like there is no better time of year and I just cannot wait for Christmas. Plus, I get to bring out all the Christmas decor and decorate for Christmas and that's just always one of my favorite things to do as well. I have actually not been out shopping in quite a while. I feel like we just haven't really been buying a lot of things lately and anything I have been buying has been mostly done online or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. But you guys will have to let me know in your area, are you already starting to see Christmas things? out in the stores. I feel like it's very early, but honestly, we are getting close to October, so it wouldn't even surprise me if there's starting to be Christmas things out. That's one thing that I kind of wish that they would just wait and hold off at least to like November, but then at the same time, I know you kind of have to get things ahead of time, so I don't know. I'm a little torn on it, but Either way, let me know if you are seeing Christmas items out in your store or are the stores near you still like full on fall. Now that we have our living room and kitchen and looking nice and tidy and clean, we are going to start cooking those yummy recipes I was telling you guys about so you can enjoy them all year round for sure. But there are aspects of each of these recipes that just really remind me of fall. They're super warm, really cozy. I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to share these ones with you guys. Now, like I had mentioned earlier, these are going to be like paleo friendly, so they are gluten-free and dairy-free. But trust me, even if you enjoy gluten and dairy, you are not going to be missing them in these recipes. They are really, really yummy. And they're also like pretty much all the ones I ever share with you guys. They are very simple. They're not like some crazy, you know, fancy recipe or anything, but they taste incredible. So we have a main dish. It's going to be like a chicken salad with a little extra in it. And then we are also going to have like some side dishes, but one of them is a Hasselback sweet potato. And that can actually be made into like a whole meal and then we have two super delicious like dessert treat recipes so we have a lot that I'm gonna share with you guys as far as like recipes go so let's go ahead and jump into it I think we're going to start out with the chicken salad and we're also going to check on this ah, this chili is smelling oh my gosh you guys I wish you could smell it just like that tiny little hint of cinnamon that we added in it is smelling like so fall in here and we have our candles going ah. I wish you guys could smell videos. You would be drooling on this one, but this is looking so good. Okay, let's do this. Actually, I have a slight change of plans. <laughs> I decided I'm going to make myself some mud water just so I have something warm to sip on while I'm cooking. So I'm grabbing a mug. I seriously need to come back in here and declutter already. I don't know how we accumulate so many mugs. I don't feel like we get them a lot, but I'm gonna make some mud water and then we'll get to cooking. Turn your sorrow in, burn every piece of it. Let me comfort you, I'll be your go to. Cause these are youthful days, we will grow in great worse or better. Our time is best together. You must know that I love you so. Never bargain you for your waiting gold. And this is only a measure. It can only get better. It can only get better. And this is only a measure. It can only get better. It can only get better. Seeing through a single eye, you're missing half of what this world is. All right, this first recipe that we're gonna make is super simple. It's just a chicken salad. I'm just using canned chicken today, but you can definitely shred your own chicken, cook that up, whatever. The few items that make this feel like a fall chicken salad is because you're adding in cranberries, you add in pecans and apple. All those will give it like a delicious crunch and sweetness. It just feels like fall to me. So we're gonna go ahead and whip that up and then we'll move on to the next recipe. 
For this recipe, you're going to need three cups of shredded chicken, one diced apple, three stalks of celery all chopped up, half a cup of chopped pecans, one third cup of dried cranberries, a third cup of mayonnaise, the juice of half a lemon, one tablespoon of dill or parsley, and salt and pepper to taste. So to start out, you are just going to want to wash your produce and then chop up your apples and celery and make sure you dice them up nice and small into bite-sized pieces. And if you don't enjoy some of these mix-ins, you can definitely omit any ones you don't like or don't have. And you can also add in things like grapes. You can also add in green onions. Those are just a few other additional mix-ins that are super yummy. Next, in a small mixing bowl, you're going to add in all of your shredded chicken. Now you can make this from home yourself or you can do as I'm doing here using canned chicken. I typically would make my own chicken, but I just did not actually have any frozen chicken on hand at this moment. And so I kind of went with what I had. And then once you have that in your bowl, you're going to add in all the rest of your mix-ins, including your apples, chopped pecans, celery. Give that a good mix until everything is nice and distributed. And then you can add in your mayonnaise along with your lemon juice and whatever herb you're liking to use, which I go for dill, but you could also use parsley and then just salt and pepper to taste Then give everything a really good mix until everything is well combined. This recipe comes together in no time, especially if you're doing what I'm doing here and just using canned chicken, or if you have leftover shredded chicken, this is just such a great way to use up those leftovers. And I love the addition of the cranberries and the pecans and the apple in here. I feel like it's something you don't always see in a chicken salad. And I feel like it gives you a lot of those fresh flavors, a lot of added crunch while also feeling very cozy and warm like fall. still raining outside it's been like on and off all day it's kind of drizzling now but it was like a downpour just a few minutes ago we have to celebrate the rain here in arizona because other than monsoon season we just do not get a whole lot of it the next thing we are going to work on are some Hasselback sweet potatoes. If you have never had Hasselback potatoes, they are super yummy. They're basically like a fancy baked potato, except that they give you like a lot more texture because instead of just baking it and cutting it down the middle, you're actually going to make a lot of different cuts in it and it's just going to give like that much more surface area for everything to crisp up. So we are going to be using sweet potatoes today, but if you don't like sweet potatoes, you can definitely use regular potatoes for this. And then you can top it with basically whatever you want. I'm going to do two options today. So you can either do like a sweet option with sugar and cinnamon, or you can do a savory option with rosemary and just some different more savory spices. To make these Hasselback sweet potatoes, you're going to start with however many sweet potatoes you want, along with coconut oil or olive oil. And then depending on what kind of flavor profile you want, whether you want it to be sweet or savory, I like to add in some coconut sugar and cinnamon and sea salt for a sweeter flavor. Or you can go the other way with fresh garlic, rosemary, and salt and pepper, and that gives a delicious savory flavor. So to start out on these, you're going to get two wooden spoons or really anything that you can put on either side of your sweet potato. And the reason you do that is as you can see, when I cut down, it cuts almost all the way through, but not quite to the bottom of the sweet potato. And that just helps keep it intact so you're not just literally slicing it. 
but you're able to slice it while still keeping the sweet potato hooked together on the bottom. And doing this is going to give all of those flavors that we're going to add in the opportunity to go throughout the sweet potato, but in a really unique way where you're getting a lot of surface area, it's going to give a totally different texture than like a regular baked sweet potato. And you can also do this with a regular potato if you don't care for sweet potatoes. Next, I'm just going to start preparing the garlic. This is my favorite way to mince fresh garlic. I have shared this tool a few times in the past, but it just makes it so easy to mince all the garlic very quickly. And I also love that the cleanup is super, super quick and easy. So I will have this link down below along with anything else that I'm using in today's video. Now once you have all of your toppings prepped and you have your sweet potatoes cut almost all the way through so they're sliced like you can see here, you're just going to grab a large baking sheet or a baking dish and I prefer to line mine with some parchment paper just to make cleanup a little bit easier and because I am doing two different flavor profiles, one being very sweet and one being more savory, I'm actually going to use a piece of parchment paper to kind of divide those but if you're doing all sweet or all savory, you can definitely skip this step. And now at this point, do as I say, not as I do. Whenever I would usually make this, I would do all savory or all sweet, but because I was trying to show you guys two different ways of doing this, I made sweet and savory at the same time, and I decided to do it a little bit differently, and it didn't work out quite as well as it usually would. So as you can see right here, I'm just putting the toppings directly over the sweet potatoes, but I'm adding them on individually. And normally what I would do is put all of these toppings into a bowl. So I would add your oil, then add whatever seasonings you're doing, adding the garlic in there, and then I would actually drizzle all of that over the sweet potato. And it just seems to go into the nooks and crannies of the sweet potatoes a lot nicer this way. So I would say this still did pretty much work where I just added in the oil on top and then I added in all of the additional seasonings, but it just was not quite the same. So definitely, like I said, do as I say, not as I do, and this will turn out incredible. Now you're just going to pop this in a 400 degree oven and bake for about 45 minutes or so, or until the sweet potato is nice and tender. And I will show you a little bit later, but right before we pull it out, maybe five or 10 minutes before they're finished cooking, I will actually go back in and add a little bit more infused oil on top. And that just helps to make it a little bit extra moist and kind of bring out those flavors once again. All right, this next recipe is so super simple. I actually learned it from my mom when she came to visit kind of recently. So here gonna start with some green beans some fresh green beans. You don't want these to be like canned or frozen because you want them to still have like that crunch and bite when you cook them. But basically you're going to start out by steaming them. And then once they are mostly steamed, you're going to saute them with some garlic and oil in a pan. And they are like the most incredible way to enjoy green beans. They are my new favorite. And I definitely wanted to share this one with you guys. For this recipe, you're going to need fresh green beans, fresh minced garlic, olive oil or avocado oil, and salt and pepper. This recipe is so super simple, but it honestly is my favorite way I think I've ever had green beans. My mom made it for us when she came to visit recently. And the whole time she was saying, yeah, I'm going to make these delicious green beans. And I was just definitely not prepared for how tasty these were going to be. But they are super simple to make and really, really like beyond flavorful. So all you want to do to start out is go ahead and start cutting up your green beans. So I'm just trimming off the ends and then I'm cutting them into bite-sized pieces. And then I'm just popping them right into my colander and I'll go ahead and wash them after I'm all done cutting everything up. Once you're all done cutting up and washing your green beans, go ahead and grab a saucepan, fill it with about an inch of water or so, and then put it on the stove on medium high heat. And once the water begins to boil, add a steamer basket over top and then plop all of your green beans right into the steamer basket and cook that for about five to seven minutes or so 
but this is an important part. Make sure that you do not overcook the green beans. You do not want them to be mushy at all. You still want them to have quite a bite. So be sure to be checking on those and pull them out before they start to lose that crunch. Now, while the green beans are cooking, I'm just going to start preparing my fresh garlic. This is a recipe I would definitely not use jarred garlic for anything. I would definitely use the fresh stuff. Just because there are so few ingredients in this dish, you really want each ingredient to be as fresh and flavorful as possible. Now once the green beans have been steamed long enough, you're going to add some olive oil into a saute pan along with that fresh garlic that you just minced and then let that kind of heat up together. And then once the oil and garlic is bubbling, you're going to dump in all of those deliciously steamed green beans and you're just going to saute these for a few minutes until they start to get a little color and they just finish cooking. But again, make sure that they are not getting too mushy. And then to finish them off, you're just going to salt and pepper to taste and then you can serve a Immediately or pop them into an airtight container and reheat throughout the week. They are delicious no matter when you enjoy these. Now jumping back over to the sweet potatoes that have been cooking in the oven for quite a while. As you can see, I'm just adding in my little oil paste with the seasonings and I'm just going to be brushing that onto the sweet potatoes and giving them a little extra moisture and a little bit more flavor before they finish cooking. Then I'm gonna pop them back in the oven for about five to 10 more minutes and then they will be all finished. All right, we have everything making progress. I added a little extra oil and seasonings <laughs> to these potatoes. Do you hear that sizzle? It's so good. All the kids are home from school and Luke is hungry a little early. So I'm gonna go ahead and make him some of the chili. So I'm gonna add my last ingredient into here and then I'll make up a bowl for him and show you guys that. And then we'll get going on the yummy, 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 delicious desserts. The last thing that I want to do to this chili that we made early on in the video is to go ahead and add in one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Now this is not going to be cooked for a long time, but because it is still being warmed in the crock pot, it is going to take out like that very intense apple cider vinegar taste while it's still gonna give you all those health benefits and also give just a little extra added flavor to the soup. So once you do that, you can just stir everything up, remove any of the bay leaves that you can find in there and then go ahead and serve the soup and enjoy. This chili, just like any other soup really, is going to be really great to enjoy throughout the week or you can of course serve it immediately. It is such a simple and hearty chili and I feel like because you have the apple cider in there and you also have that little bit of cinnamon, it just tastes exactly like fall to me. All right, the next recipe, Liam is home and he's gonna help me out. We are going to make candied pecans with some maple syrup, you ready? Okay. For this recipe, you are going to need three cups of pecans, one third cup of maple syrup, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, three tablespoons of melted coconut oil, and half a teaspoon of sea salt. These pecans are so delicious. Nobody could stop snacking on them as soon as they came out of the oven. And they are also incredibly easy. Literally, all you have to do is add all of your ingredients right into a mixing bowl 
and then give it a good stir. So we're adding in the pecans, the maple syrup, the coconut oil, the cinnamon and spices, and we can't forget about the vanilla. Then we give that a good mix, and then we're going to end up adding that onto a lined baking sheet with parchment paper, and then bake it in a 375 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. The only thing about that is to make sure that you're opening up the oven door and stirring it pretty consistently so that they don't burn and you'll see in just a minute but do not forget to set your timer <laughs> that's a little hint on what i'm about to do we ended up burning them slightly because i forgot about the timer but there were still plenty of unburned ones to go around but they are so 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 tasty these would be like the perfect gift for a neighbor a friend teacher just whoever i'm sure they will love them Um, so you want to put it in, you want to cook it in for 15 minutes. minutes. And then what do you want to do sometimes? Sometimes you want to stir it. Yep, stir um, it occasionally okay. and we'll heat it in a 375. Yeah, you oven. will. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> So I may have forgotten to put the final timer on and we burnt some of these, but a lot of them are really good. We just have to pick through yep. <laughs> the burnt ones, Yeah. but the kids are still loving them. They're I still know, good. these are good. They're good. All right, so next and last, we are going to make the apples. Yep, an apple crisp. Okay, so for this recipe, we need apples, the juice of half a lemon, mm -hmm. nutmeg, coconut sugar, almond flour, pecans, that's optional. You can also add in coconut flakes, but the rest of the family doesn't like coconut that much. Cinnamon, vanilla, and coconut oil. Pretty burnt one. You have to cut the apples. We need to peel the apples. Okay. Oh, yep. So bring the apples over. Thank you. So to start this recipe out, we are just using whatever apples we have on hand, and we are just working on peeling the apples and then slicing them up nice and thin. Now this part was a little bit hard to include the boys on, but also it's just giving them these skills that even though they might not be perfected, they'll never learn if they don't start working on them. So I was very carefully letting them peel the apples and then even more carefully watching them cut up the apples, but they were so proud of themselves that they were able to slice up the apples on their own and use the adult knives, which they know they can't use without permission and without supervision, but it was just a lot of fun having them in the kitchen and doing some of these jobs that are usually too big or grown up for them. Oh, that works. Good job. That was actually way more easier once I tried that. Am I doing a good job? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh! Look. Now once you have all of your apples peeled and sliced into thin little slices and they are added into a small baking dish, you're going to add in the juice from half a lemon along with two teaspoons of vanilla extract and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Then go ahead and mix that up softly until everything is well incorporated. Down, 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 we could burn it down. 
Go ahead and set your apples aside for a second and in a small bowl you're going to add in your almond flour, your smashed pecans if you want to add some more nuts in there, your coconut sugar if you would like, along with an additional half teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then go ahead and give that a really good stir until everything is well combined and then you're simply just going to toss that over your apples and try to smooth it out so that it's mostly even all around the apples and then you're going to pop the apples into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so don't forget to cover them like we did at first but you just want to cover them with aluminum foil for the first part and then once they've been cooking for about 20 minutes or so you're going to pull the aluminum foil off and let them bake for another 10 to 15 minutes or until the apples are fork tender and the top is a little golden brown All right, we have the apples in the oven. They are going to cook covered for about 20 minutes. Then we are going to take the cover off and continue baking for another like 10 to 20 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. And ooey gooey delicious. Once we were all done cooking in the kitchen, I just had Liam and Noah start helping me tidy up the kitchen. And I don't know if this is the same at your house, but I feel like whenever they are involved in cooking, they are always way more willing and happy to clean and also enjoy the food that they made whenever they are involved in the process of it. And I love having them in the kitchen with me, but it is something that I have to be very intentional about because I do feel like it is much faster and easier a lot of times just to do everything myself because I can move at a faster pace than they can and I kind of know all of the rules or you know exactly how to do things whereas when you have kids in the kitchen you have to explain everything and kind of work through it with them but I really do love including them not only for the memories and just teaching them some responsibility but also just keeping in mind that we need to prepare them for life when they are grown so that way when they grow up and they're out of the house they know how to cook they know how to wash dishes do laundry clean the toilets, you know, do all the homemaking things as well. Let me know in the comments if you were taught those things when you were a kid and if you knew how to do them when you moved out on your own. I know it's so common not to learn those things as a kid and so I really just wanna give our kids a step up in that way and just make sure that they know like the basics of homemaking and how to run a household. Thank you for the food, Mom. You're welcome. Very good. It's a uh, special chicken chili. Yep, it's a special ingredient: beans, but they're bell beans. They like to go. Who said it was a family secret? It's not. Um, you won't taste it. Bee power. Bee power. You guys, I wish you could taste all the yummy things we made today and I wish you could smell it because it would definitely encourage you to 
whip out these recipes. They are really very simple to make and they all are just such delicious recipes. You are going to love any of the ones that you choose to make. If you do end up making any of them, let me know in the comments which ones you make and what you think of them. And as always, thank you so much for choosing to hang out with me today. I am so grateful that you clicked on this video and stuck with me till the end. You guys are amazing. If you are not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you need some more homemaking motivation, I'm going to link my homemaking playlist right here. This playlist is full of tons of cleaning motivation along with a lot, a lot of recipes. So if you want more recipes like this, then go ahead and check that out. And I will see you right back here for another one very soon. Bye guys.